Hello everyone, hope you are all doing well. In this video, we will discuss the last problem of lead code by weekly contest 89. It's a hard level problem and I would say a pretty good problem to solve. Uh, so the problem name is create components with same value. So the problem statement says that there is an undirected tree with n nodes labeled from 0 to n minus 1. You are also given a zero indexed integer array nums of length n where nums of i represents the value of the ith node. You are also given a 2D integer array edges of length n minus 1 where edges of i equals to ai comma bi indicating that there is an edge between ai and bi. Now since it's a tree obviously for n nodes you will have n minus 1 edges and that is what it, this array represents right. You are allowed to delete some edges splitting the tree into multiple connected components. Let the value of a component be the sum of all nums of i for which i is the uh, i is in the component right now return the maximum number of edges you can delete such that every connected component in the tree has the same value and there are some examples so let me uh, just explain you with the help of a uh, of the given diagram so it will become easier to understand right so it says that uh, basically you are given an undirected tree right uh, which has n nodes and they are numbered from 0 to n minus 1 right now you are also given an array edges Right. And which has uh, some um, basically it represents that what are the edges in your graph, right? Like for example, I will take the first one given in the problem. So the array that I have is first is 6, 2, 2, 2 and 6. This is my nums array and there is an edges array. So edges is 0, 1, 1, 2 then I have 1 comma 3 then I have 3 comma 4 this is edges so let's form a tree with the same right so there are uh, four nodes right so 0 this is the first node this is connected to 0 is connected to 1 right so 0 is connected to 1 1 is connected to 2 sorry 1 is connected to 2 so 1 is connect just a second yeah 1 is connected to 2 now 1 is also connected to 3 so 1 is connected to 3 3 is connected to 4 this is your tree right we have 5 nodes and 4 edges obviously now every node has a weightage this is the weight of first node this is second third fourth and fifth right so first node has a weight of this second this third this this and this right this is what is given in your problem right now what the problem says is you are allowed to delete some edges right now when you delete some of the edges obviously the tree will split into multiple connected components right and what is the value of a connected component so that is the sum of the numbers that are present in that connected component like for example if these two are forming a connected component then uh, the basically the value of that component is 2 plus 6 because these are the two nodes in that connected component and uh, this node has a value of 2 and this node has a value of 6 so this is the uh, value of that connected component right now what we need to find is we need to find the maximum number of edges that we can delete such that every connected component in the tree has the same value right so if i explain you that just a second let me just okay yeah so this was 6 so uh, if i explain you so it says that how can you how can you split it so if you delete this edge if this is gone then what is the value of this component it is just six we have just one node right now the remaining component is this right now if we also delete this edge so what is the value of this edge uh, what uh, component this is six we have just one node and what is the value of the remaining component it is two plus two plus two that is 6 so you can see we have three components when we delete two edges and all the components have a value of 6 this also has 6 this also has 6 this also has 6 right so we need to return the maximum number of edges that we can delete so since we have three components you can see we deleted two edges like for n components we delete n minus one edges right you delete first this edge was delete and then this edge so that is what you need to return right so i, I hope the explanation of the problem is clear now uh, let's see what what could be the approach of this one right so just 
just see one thing that <coughs> uh, what what are the things to observe here right so every node has some value right every node has some value that is represented by this array right so what if i find the sum of these numbers i'll tell you why we are finding the sum of these numbers what if i find the sum of these values so that will be 6 plus 2 plus 2 plus 2 plus 6 this comes out to be 18 right this comes out to be 18 so this tells me what are what is the total sum of the nodes that i have the value of the nodes that i have right now what i need to do i need to divide this value into multiple chunks into multiple connected components right so what i can do if uh, so uh, how 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 can i represent this number how can i represent this number 18 can be represented by 1 into 18 what this 1 and 18 tells one tells that you have one component right you have one component and the value of that component is 18 right and that is what we see here all tree is a single component and the value of that tree is 18 this is the first thing how can we represent 18 again it can be 2 into 9 right this says i have two components and the value of each component is 9 right so uh, actually if you see then it is not possible to form such a combination that you have two components you delete some edges to form just two components and the sum of each component is 9 that is not possible now what is the other representation of 18 this that is 83 into 6 it says this is the number of comp components and this is the number of uh, this is the value of each component so as we saw in the example we have three components and the value of each component is 6 right so i hope you you are getting a gist of this right now what could be the other thing uh, 4 no 5 no 6 6 into 3 again so is it possible to divide it into six component which and each having a sum of three no that is not possible right so in this case you see this is the maximum number of components that i can get right this is the maximum number of components or i can say whatever is the sum of the values in my tree i can try to represent it in whichever way i can these are the three representations and in whichever representation i get the maximum number of components or the minimum value of each component that will be my answer so if i get three components from this then i can delete two edges for n components you can delete n minus one edges right so i hope this logic is clear how we will move to the details but the, i hope this logic is clear that you find the sum of all the values because actually you need to divide these values right you you need to divide the tree such that this 18 is divided into uh, equal values n equal x equal values so x into y needs to be 18 now we are trying to see what x and y satisfies our condition and among which which is the maximum x here x represents the number of components and number of components and y represents the value of each component right value of each component so this is the logic that we will be using also uh, this is a basic factorization technique right this is the first part now what is the second part the second part is how do we find that is it possible to form three components each having a value of six this is the second part right now this part can actually be solved using a basic dfs right now how do we how do we modify our dfs right so how we modify our dfs is we'll start traversing our tree Suppose this is our tree, something like this. Suppose this is our tree. I have not mentioned the values. Suppose this is our tree. Now, what we will do is, if we visit, if if a subtree uh, we have visited, right? If if we have visited a subtree that is forming a component, right? So what we do? Suppose this is the first node that I visit for this particular subtree. Then this guy, this guy will contain the sum of these three values, sum of these three values, right? Or I can say, if I am able to, while performing DFS, if I am able to form a component whose sum, whose sum is equals to the target. What is my target in this case? So what I will be doing, I will be doing factorization 1 into 18, 2 into 9, 3 into 6, something like this. And I will be calling my DFS function for each iteration independently. So if, let's consider the case of 3 into 6. I will call it 
and my target will be 6 that I want to form my component such that each component has a value of 6. So what I'll do, I'll start traversing my tree, right? When I, when I start traversing my tree, so I'll try to see whether it can be split uh, to form the uh, to, to, to form the required number of uh, components and and the uh, and the sum each with the target sum so right so what i'll do suppose i start dfs from this node so after this i visit this right after this i visit this and so on so what these guys will do na these guys will return their sum or their value right this will represent that okay this is my subtree this is my subtree right or now since it is a leaf node then it will just return its own sum so when it will return its sum to its parent like for example this node so this guy will check that if my sum whatever sum i've got like my sum plus sum from my subtrees if this sum equals to the target that i want then what what will happen i get at least one component i get one component so initially i wanted three components each with value 6 i have got one component with value 6 now i just need to search for two more components with value 6 so this tree will be pruned right now my remaining tree will be this comes here this comes here this comes here this guy is removed right this is the approach that i'll be using now how to do this the simple way to do this will be when you start your dfs so uh, suppose you are starting from here so this guy will have a value of uh, whatever value it has right whatever value in the form of visited array only right you assign each of them a weightage so this, the the weightage assigned to this one will be the value that that it has right now it goes here when it goes here again this this node will have the value that that is assigned to them and so on now for this what are the adjacent nodes first construct the graph first construct the graph that for this node these are the adjacent nodes this and this for this one these are the adjacent nodes first you need to construct the graph when you construct the graph then what you do you start traversing and finally what you do from every dfs traversal from every dfs traversal you return the sum of your subtree right and if the sum of your subtree equals to target then you return zero simple then you return zero this is just a way of representation and if the sum of your subtree if your the sum of your subtree is greater than the target what this means it means that i cannot form a subtree i cannot form a subtree from this right so what what we'll do we'll return a very big number from here uh, suppose 10 raised to power 9 plus 7 right so the basic logic is uh, doing factorization right doing factorization and then what do you, what do you do you simple start traversing uh, your tree when you start traversing your tree then for every subtree when you when you do a dfs you, your leaf node start returning values right because it's a dfs you go from here to here here to here so after dfs is done when you read leaf node it will return its value so this node will see what is the value of my subtrees if that is equals to target i am done one of the component is reduced i need to just find two more components so i will return zero i will return zero to my parent that don't consider me as existent now you find two more components given that this subtree has been removed this is the main logic right because i told na, that um, child nodes will return their sum to the parent now since this has formed a valid subtree you return zero as your sum that okay i have already formed i have taken care of myself you do the remaining stuff and finally if the dfs from root node finally my dfs function returns zero that means i am able to form uh, all the components uh, i i am i am able to form multiple components each with value six then all i do, uh, all i'll do is i'll return that for n components n minus 1 edges i have removed and n minus 1 will, will be my answer right let's exp uh, let me explain it with the help of a diagram also the explanation was very good i was looking for some good solutions for this problem and i found out uh, this guy posting a very good solution uh, so i wrote the code myself uh, basically in java doing some modifications but this was a great solution uh, so yeah i referred to this code because the code was very clean and the logic was very crisp i would say so we are discussing the same logic here uh, thanks for the solution so here when i come just see uh, my my code starts from line number 42 sum equals to zero and n is the nums uh, the, the number of items that i have number of nodes now what i do i find the sum on line number 45 then i construct the graph on line number 47 construction of graph is very trivial it's just that i have written a, a different function that is the way you code right in industry so uh, 
you you traverse all the edges if your graph doesn't uh, so graph is represented by a hash map that these are the modifications that i have done on line number 3 you can see so uh, if the graph doesn't contain uh, the current node you put it with a new array list you do it basic stuff and then add it so for an edge a comma b you add a into the adjacency list of b and vice versa when your graph is constructed on line number 45 what you do you create a temp array this will be sort of a visited array or you can say this will contain the values of the subtrees that i was talking about right now you start i equals to n i is greater than n uh, i minus minus right so basically what we are doing <coughs> sorry basically what we are doing we are seeing that in how many ways can be divided the factorization thing that i was talking about right the factorization thing so what i, I what i do i check whatever is my sum is that divisible by i there are other ways as well you can start from one you can check that uh, i whether i is less than square root of sum or not that that is one other way but uh, this is the way that i i saw i just followed it so if sum of i is not equals to 0 just continue that means there is no probability that splitting the tree uh, in i part is possible right now if that is possible that means you can divide you can divide your tree in i number of component so what do you will do you will just uh, you will just uh, call your dfs function that is traverse you will pass nums which which are the node values you will pass zero because you are starting from the zeroth node you will pass temp that is the array which will contain all the values of the subtrees and all and you will pass sum divided by i now sum divided by i is your target the uh, the value that each component should have right now we come to line number 5 as i told you on line number 6 what we do as soon as we come into the function we assign the current node uh, its value whatever is the value that is assigned because temp will hold the um, uh, basically temp is holding the value of this component that means uh, current node and the subtree nodes right nodes in the subtree now what i do on line number 7 i fetch the list adjacency list of the current node and i start traversing it on line number 9 I, uh, i check if temp of current node is not equal to 0 or n adjacency list is no, uh, ad, uh, pair, uh, neighbor node is not equal to 0 that means this node has been visited so you skip it that is why the in comment it is written this condition represent that the node ha n has been visited now on line number 13 what i do temp of current plus equals to traverse now you traverse and your current node changes you, uh, the current node becomes n and your target is again the same right so that is what you do and on line number 16 you check if your if temp of current is greater than target that means if the current subtree has a value greater than target that means obviously you cannot reduce the value right it has already become large so you return a very big value then no it is not at all possible there are other ways as well to tackle this case but this was the one that we followed and finally if uh, once you uh, traverse all the neighbor nodes what do you do you check if the current node is forming a subtree which is equals to target that means this is a valid sub uh, valid component so you return zero you say that i am forming a valid component now you find other components whether you are able to find or not right and you return temp of current because if it's a valid component you return zero or you return temp of current temp of current holds the value of current node and the subtree nodes right so this is the basic stuff it was a very good problem i would say um, the intuition part and everything that's why the accuracy is also pretty less and the solution that i referred was uh, a great one so that's why i thought i'll mention that guy as well so yeah i hope you learned something new from this video uh, if if you have if you still have any queries do mention that into the comments uh, also if you find this video useful do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel and yeah take care bye bye